starting lineups for tonight's game between the Wolverines from the University of Michigan and the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. At one forward for the Wolverines, a 6'7 senior from Flint, Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice. At forward for the Hawkeyes, a 6'8 senior from Springfield, Illinois, number 25, Eddie Horton. At the other forward for Michigan, a 6'10 junior from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. Number 20, Mike Griffin. At guard for the Hawkeyes. A 6'6 six -six senior from Flint, Michigan. Number 23, Roy Marble. At the other guard for the Wolverines, a 6'2 junior from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Number 21, Rumiel Robinson. of Michigan in his ninth season as the head man at the Wolverine campus. His counterpart tonight, Iowa's Tom Davis, who is in his third season here. He has guided this team to a 17-4 and record after seasons of 30 victories and 24 wins. It has been a very nice romance between Tom Davis and the Iowa Hawkeye fans. Interesting in that Matt Bullard will get the start tonight. His first action in returning from a serious knee injury was on Sunday against Illinois. He appeared in 22 minutes and performed exceedingly well tonight against the start. The most impressive thing was the amount of time he played, Larry, during that game to come off that injury, regardless of whether he was working out or not. It's different to work out and different to play in the games. Thompson uh, started every game that Bullard wasn't there, and now he's got them both in the lineup tonight. For the first time, Jepson is not starting out of the 21 games that Iowa's played this year. The home crowd, 15,500 on its feet at Harbor Hawkeye Arena, a sell-out crowd naturally. It has been a tough, tough place for anybody to win. In the last four seasons, the Hawkeyes are 65 and 9 here on the home court. It is a new court this season. Little parquet, parquet little parquet, big squares. Uh, again, it'll be very important for Michigan to make sure they don't turn that ball over too much. A lot of weight will go on Ramil Robinson's shoulders tonight. Michigan controlling the opening tip. Terry Mills gives it to Ramil Robinson. He will be hounded all over the court this evening in the hustling, pressing the fence. Going by the Iowa Hawkeye. Loy Vaught gives it to Ramil. On top to Rice, who will be a marked man. Rice, 29 points, his last outing against Michigan State. Inside it goes. Mill shot not good. Slammed on the floor, rolls around, still rolling around. Finally dug up by Marble. Out it comes to Armstrong. They bring it down quickly. Deals it off to Thompson. Rebound knocked into the air, and a foul is going to be called. It will be charged against Roy Thompson of Iowa. Tough series for Michigan. Good entry pass on the inside to Mills and looked like he might have gotten foul when he went to the basket, but he came away without any points and the ball, like a hockey puck out there on the floor, Michigan could not get a hold of it. Let's see how they handle the press. 
Bott gives it to Ramil Robinson, who brings it up the court, down the side, sees some daylight, goes to the baseline, puts it up, not good. Robinson gets it back, puts it up, not good. Tipped by Vaught, not good. And pulled off the board by Roy Marble. Hard to believe, again, no contact on it there. They're letting them play at both ends. Armstrong to the corner to Marble. He is bottled up and kicks it back outside. Bullard throws it back out to Thompson. Down the lane goes Marble. He scores. Hort. I think that was Horton. It was Horton. I beg your pardon. I'll tell you, he's been dynamite lately. He's come on so strong. I think he's the big difference in this ball club. He just seems like he gets more confidence each game he plays. He's averaging 19 points of all game. Turnover brought back by Marble. Great move by Thompson. Missed the shot. Pulled off by Mills. Lead pass for Vaught. Vaught stops, squares, puts it up and in. Tell you, when he squares up, that's the reason he's a leading shooter in the country. Well over 70%. Marble in old trouble. Kicks it out to Bullard. Bullard goes to the free throw line. Knocked out of his hands. Picked off by... Mike Griffin moves it down to Robinson. Jumper by Vaught. Long. Cleared by Bullard. Out left to Horton. Knocked into the air by Vaught. He converts the steal. Gets it down to Robinson. Neither team uh, really getting into their offenses very much, uh, especially Michigan as Rice unloads a three-pointer, and it's good. We've seen so many of those. That you probably didn't get a chance to see the Michigan State game the last time, but Rice hit five out of six from three-point range in that game. That uh, net is wrapped up on the shooting end for Iowa. A little momentarily delay as they pull the net down. See Tom Davis working along the bench. Glenn Rice again, such a pure shooter. When he squares up, he shoots that ball from three-point range like he's inside the foul line. Really pretty to watch. Bullard moves it back outside to Armstrong. Over it goes to along the right side. Brought back by Robinson. Robinson with a jump shot off the glass and in. Michigan in front, 7-2. to two. Horton to the corner. Back out to Horton. He gives it to Thompson. Armstrong on the baseline. Here's Bullard. His shot is kicked outside, picked up by Griffin, and he's hammered from behind foul. by Bullard. It'll be an intentional foul. Two shots coming up as Bullard made a diving effort. It's kind of a strange foul, but nevertheless, it occurred. Watch it here again. Griffin's got it. And he goes ahead and wraps himself around there, and he had a clear breakaway. If not, Robinson was going to be in there. So we'll get two shots here for Griffin and the ball back again. So a critical situation early for Iowa. Mike Griffin will go to the free throw line to shoot two for Michigan. Wolverines in front by five. Dr. Tom Davis saying he was going for the ball, but again, he was almost like a hockey situation, Larry. Uh, he had a clear breakaway there, an easy two points if Bullard didn't hit him. Mike hits the first one to give Michigan a six-point lead. Now it is nine to two, and the Wolverines will put it into play in front of us. Terry Mills will toss it in for Michigan. Comes into Robinson. James Moses into the ball game for Iowa's Rice hits from long range. 11 to 2. Bullard has left the floor for the Hawkeyes. Moses gives it to Looking Bill. Around it goes the right side to Horton. Down the lane. Puts it up. And rolls off to the right side. Cleared by Mills. Brought down by Ramil. Moses going for the steal. Robinson puts it up. Around and in. Got away with that one, Larry. But that's been Ramil's trouble a little bit. He overhandled the ball there. And he's lucky to come away with the basket. An 11-point Michigan lead. 13-2. Looking, Bill. Moves it to the right side to Horton. Marble lets it fly. Hits the back of the rim. Tipped up once. To the floor it goes. Controlled by Marble, and he backs it away. First time Iowa's been able to get more than one shot. Marble in the corner out to Looking, Bill. Moves it off to Horton. Takes a look. Not the shot. 28 seconds on the shot clock. Moves it across, not a marble. In on the post it goes. Dribble out of there. 
Tried to get it inside to Horton. Went right through his hands and out of bounds. So the turnover gives the ball back to Michigan. The Wolverines are in front 13-2. 15-38 left in the first half. We'll be back in a moment on Passports. Wolverines hitting 58.7% of their shots from the field for the season, which is best in the nation. Off to a fast start here this evening, five of nine from the floor. Certainly are, and again, getting those nine shots. They got a couple of three shots uh, several times down the floor, and that's against one of the best rebounding teams uh, in the nation. 13-point run for Michigan. They fell behind by two points early. Iowa finally getting a chance to play at home, playing just one game on this surface in January. They are in the middle of a stretch of five of nine here at Carver Hawkeye, which has been very good to them over the years. Robinson, Robinson so far doing an excellent job of handling the ball, even though I said he overhandles it once in a while. They've been able to break that pressure, but Iowa will stay in it the whole time, regardless of how much Michigan scores. Les Jepson into the ball game now for Iowa. Inbound is knocked out of bounds by Moses. It'll be Michigan's ball unless the official who called it is overruled. Nope, he is not overruled. So Mills will toss it in. Garner hustling, covering Robinson. Garner. Now Robinson brings it across the timeline. Over to Griffin. Along the right side to Robinson. Robinson with a running jump shot off the front of the rim and in. So Michigan is in front 15 to two. Great job by Robinson again. He got the nice roll on that. He did a good job of penetrating first. Here's a nice lead, but Bullard knocks it long. Armstrong keeps it into play, tosses it out to Garner. Bullard back into the ball game for the Hawkeyes. Moses. Garner, Moses, back out to Armstrong. 28 seconds left on the shot clock. One thing Iowa has done so far is they've kept everybody fresh. They got a lot of new people in the game, and that may in the long run hurt Michigan. Fall away by Jepson, no good, but he was fouled. And Les Jepson will go to the free throw line. Lloyd Vaughn is charged with a personal foul. Jepson, who is a 64% free throw shooter, will go to the line to shoot a pair. Sometimes something like this, when they can't hit it all, uh, might get Iowa going, getting somebody to go to the line. They've had a long dry spell, hit that first basket with less than 30 seconds gone in the game, so they've gone five minutes now uh, without much happening. Jepson's been bothered by a cracked rib, but has continued to play. Seven-footer, 230 from Bobells, North Dakota. 15-3. Well, Jepson hits two and leaves the ball game. Ed Horton returns. Horton, the senior from Springfield, Illinois. Averaged 25 points a game last week to run his average up to 19 per season. Higgins into the ball game now for Michigan, as is Mark Hughes. Robinson under to Mills, laying as a beautiful pass from Robinson. Good ball movement underneath. Uh, got the ball to Higgins on the side. Ramil saw him all alone. 17 to four, Michigan in front. Bullard gets it inside. Horton reverses, puts it up. Short, rebound by Hughes. Out met Ramil. Robinson hustles it up the floor. It's three on two. Robinson puts it up. It is no good. Tipped out by Rice, and a foul is called, and it will be on Glenn Rice. First personal on Glenn, second team foul against the Wolverines. Oh, we had a little contact on Ramil there. I'm not sure he couldn't have gotten called for the offensive foul when he had that little jumper on the inside. There was definitely contact, but he did not go up vertically. He went towards the basket. No foul call again. Fans Thompson. Not, fans not very happy here with the officials, nor has Dr. Thompson or Davis been so far. Thompson back into the ball game now for Iowa, where's number 32. Hawkeyes continue to move personnel back and forth. Looking Bill inside, a big collision as Marble puts his shot up, gets the missed shot, and it's ripped away by Higgins. Here's two on one. Robinson all the way went over the top of an offensive foul. 
He had Rice coming in off from the right wing, but chose to go all the way and has called for his first personal. Again, overhandle it. All he had to do was stop and lob it up there, and Glenn Rice had an easy shove, and he didn't hit he didn't hit Armstrong very hard. And Iowa has been coached to lay down when they get that contact, but that's a good play by B.J. Armstrong. Robinson leaves the ball game, and Kirk Taylor, number 23, is in to replace him. Bill Frieder over talking to Robinson. All he had to do was give that ball to Rice, and it was a slam dunk. Looking, Bill, moves it around to Horton, and a pushing foul is called inside, and this one will be against Higgins, I believe. Ran over somebody on the inside on a down screen, and uh, again, you got to fight through that screen as best you can. Iowa, Iowa likes to run that shuffle and makes it tough. First personal on Higgins, fourth team foul against Michigan. We have 13-37 left in the opening half. Wolverines are in front, 17-4. Out it comes to Horton in the lane. Comes back to the right hand and scores. Four points for Big Ed. Little court pressure, lead pass for Rice, two on one. Rice on the right, stops, puts it up, and in. Well, that's a nice job of breaking the press, 19-6. Michigan in front, long range, three-point try, rolls off as Armstrong misses. Cleared by Higgins, outlet to Taylor. Ahead to Mills. Mills working one on one, tried to get it inside to Hughes, and a foul was called from behind on Armstrong, his first personal got to be a tough place to play and officiate every call that's made when it goes against the Hawkeyes. Good job by Mills entering it here to Hughes. Reached around the inside. Not much of a foul. Got him on the arm. Brought back into the ball game to replace Mills who will get a breather. 13.06 left in the opening half. Michigan in front by 13. Hughes will toss it in. Comes out to Taylor. Rice. Moves in for a two-point effort. Bounces high. Tipped by Vaughn. Oh, what a great play as he was bumped by Marble and still got it down. Here comes Taylor. Taylor puts it up. He's fouled by Looking Bill. Nice to see Kirk Taylor come off the bench and give him a little lift. That was the thing they had to worry about most of the time. If Ramil needed a break, would Kirk Taylor respond? Time is out with 12.51 left in the opening half. Michigan leads by 15. It's 21-6. Michigan in front, 21 to 6, and a surprising development early in this one this evening. Well, they're on the fast track right now. I think the surprising thing is Iowa's been able to, unable to find the basket, but Michigan, as you mentioned, doing a superb job of breaking the press. They get the ball in the middle, and the big guys have been filling the lanes. Everything's been going their way so far early as they're shooting 60% from the field, 9 out of 15. Iowa only 17%, 2 out of 12. Now you got a chance of falling behind with something like that, and that is what has happened. Michigan has been red hot. They've gotten some laps. They've done a great job on the boards. Two outstanding rebounding ball clubs. Well, it's a game of averages, so you know that uh, you're not going to continue at that pace all night, except Michigan has been leading the nation in the last two or three years in field goal accuracy as Kirk Taylor is going to go to the line here with a chance to make a couple. Taylor will shoot two for the Wolverines, who are in front by 15 with 12.51 left in the opening half. Taylor shooting only 62.5% from the free throw line this season. Now the Hawkeyes back two men away from the uh, charity lane, Thompson and Marble. And that pulls two Wolverines off, obviously. Taylor hits the second half of the two-shot foul situation. Bullard back into the ball game now for Iowa. Bob pass for Jeff, takes it to the left side. You can see that heavy brace on that left knee. Armstrong outside. 22-6 the score. Michigan in front. Horton looks inside. Almost lost the ball. He did. Picked up by Vaught. Three on two. Off to Taylor. Back to Hughes. Hughes from 12. No good. Hughes gets it back. Puts it back up. Not good. Bullard rebounds. Not a good shot either. He got that rebound. He should have poised it up now. No hurry at all for Michigan. Rice intercepts the lead pass intended for a marble as the Hawkeyes try to get a quick two on the transition. Rice. Devaught to Hughes. Back to Higgins. Higgins puts it off the glass and he is fouled. Tried to put it on the glass. The ball never got there. It was drilled out of bounds. Again, not happy with Michigan the last couple of shots they got. The first shot that Hughes got was good. The second one, he should have poised it up. As you see Higgins trying to make something happen. And 
big as he is, B.J. Armstrong uh, gives up about five inches. He was able to get that one deflected. There was no foul on the play, just an inbounds play for Michigan. Uh, Higgins tried to get it to Rice, knocked out of bounds by Garner. Garner got away with a foul underneath there. The last foul they called on Armstrong was nothing compared to the way he just smacked on Rice. Hughes inbounds it. Higgins from the corner. Bounces long. Bullard controls for Iowa. Out to Garner. To the baseline. Brought out in front. Jump shot by Marble. Not good. Cleared by Vaughn. Boy, Michigan doing an excellent job of getting position. Again, Jepson went from behind. Could have gotten called for the foul. Michigan doing a good job of cleaning up. Taylor brings it down for the Wolverines. Gives to Higgins. Post to Vaughn. Turns. In and out. Cleared by Bullard. Out to Garner. Garner tried to get it to the right side to Marble, who was cutting in from the right wing, but it was deflected out of bounds. A couple of more subs for Iowa. Back in B.J. Armstrong. And also returning is Ed Horton. Big thing Michigan has to worry about. I see Vaught uh, getting back a little slow that last time. You can't go after the ball after your team loses it on offense because Iowa possesses that great transition game. Jepson will toss it in for the Hawkeyes. 11-29 left in the opening half. Michigan in front, 22-6. Look at the rebounds. Thompson moves in. Stolen away by Higgins. Picked up by Vaught. Saves it. Gets it to Robinson. Robinson backs it away. Michigan has played very well defensively. Hughes across to Vaught. He's open. Got him. Well, you see him. I, I, I'm repetitive, but you see him square up, Larry. You know he's going to hit those. The ones he's missed have been very, very close. An 18-point lead. Garner shot is blocked beautifully by Vaught. Here's two on one. Robinson to Kirk Taylor. Missed the shot. Armstrong pulls it down. Roy Vaught can hardly go up and down the floor anymore, but boy, I tell you, he's really been hustling out there so far. Garner dumps it off, laid up and in. Thompson gets his first basket of the night. 24 to 8 as we near the halfway point of the first half. Robinson in the backcourt being guarded by Thompson. Higgins moving in, stops, feeds, Hughes, not good, cleared by Taylor, and he is fouled from behind. A holding foul is called on Les Jepson, who hit the deck. His first personal. Boy, again, Michigan really getting the ball in. I think he's gone. He just hit somebody in the face there, and uh, I think Garner's going to be out of the game if he's not careful. I can't believe he just did that. He just poked him in the face. He should be gone. Regardless of what the confrontation was, he should be out of there. He just slapped somebody in the face. Officials again trying to control it because this is an important game for both teams. I don't know whether he's been ejected from the game. He is definitely coming off the court. Here's another look at it. Well, you didn't see the reaction from Garner. No foul, nothing. There was a foul, but it wasn't the act of shooting. He was not, Kirk Taylor was not shooting the ball. There was a foul on Jepson, but uh, yeah, not I'm a shooting about foul. Garner. Oh, dead ball foul. Yeah, could have been intentional. Sometimes that's good. Higgins from the corner. Fought with a rebound. Puts it back up. Long. On the floor, Mills digs it up. Ripped away from him, picked up by Mills. Boy, oh. this reminds me a little you and Kazzy and the boys. This buddy knows Lane down there tonight. I'll tell you, there's contact all over the place. Wow. Too bad. Higgins is not hitting the shots here because he usually can really light them up. Mills inside for a fall away. Bounces off. Mills tips and he'll be called for a foul. Now Mills with a few words for Ed Horton. First personal on Terry. Can't shoot that fade away when you're as big as he is. He got nobody inside when they don't expect him to shoot the ball there. And again, you can get a better shot than that as Mills gets a little rambunctious. I see why he had a few words for Horton. Horton just gave him a shot with an elbow underneath. Not the kind of uh, play you'd expect. Tom Davis out there pleading his case, but Horton just shot Mills in the jaw with an elbow. They're still talking down at the other end. Tom Rucker out there talking to the two of them. A little pat on the behind from Horton for Mills. 
Hopefully that has been settled. 9.35 left in the first half. Michigan 24, Iowa 8. Armstrong to the corner. Inside, Horton. Right-hander, what a beauty. Six points for Ed Horton. 24-10. Here come the Wolverines. Two on one. Robinson is clobbered by Horton. First personal on Ed. Most impressive thing for Michigan is they have just struggled to get the ball in bounds, but once they get it in bounds, the pressure's been just great. As you see, Ramil take it right down to Pike here and had no choice did Horton but to foul him. Two shots coming up for Ramil Robinson. Wolverines in front, 24-10 with 9.15 left in the first half. Seven points for Ramil Robinson. Twenty-five, ten. Robinson ready with his second of two. Mills had it momentarily, chases to the corner, gets it back into play. Mills tried to get it to Vaught, deflected. Loy picks it up. Vaught cross court, three for Mills, got him. Rice, I beg your pardon. Second three-pointer for Rice. And traveling is called against Roy Marble. 28 to 10, Michigan in front, and the Wolverines will have the ball. Ed Horton been doing a, just a yeoman's job in there at both ends. He's uh, got three of their four field goals. Thompson getting the other one. Out it comes to Rice. Rice. High rebound, cleared by Moses. Out left to Armstrong. Armstrong to the baseline, and a blocking foul is called on Robinson. He is second. Again, that transition game, not much there. Ramil just a little slow. Uh, he needed a half a step more to get in his way. Again, Iowa really didn't have much of a chance there of a fast break, but they did try to make the transition. That second foul is going to bring Kirk Taylor in the game, probably for Ramil Robinson. That is correct. Jepson and Garner check in for the Hawkeyes, replacing Tur Marble and Horton. Turnovers, eight for Iowa, none for Michigan. Unbelievable, Amazing. unbelievable. Uh 8.39 left in the first half. Armstrong to Moses. Jepson to Garner. Bullard takes a look. Now goes to the free throw line. Running jumper. Mills got a piece of it. Jepson got it back and scores. 28-12. 8.20 left in the first half. Taylor double team. Feeds Vaught wide open. It's long. And a foul is called underneath. And it'll be on Rice. Second personal on Glenn. Well, I'll tell you, compared to some of the pushing and shoving has been going on down there, that was a cheap foul at best, and we're going to walk to the other end of the floor, it looks like, and shoot him up as both teams are at six. Glenn didn't really push off, but uh, he did use his body to try and clear Bullard out of there a little bit. Bullard, a sensational free throw shooter, nearly 92% from the free throw line. Transfer from Colorado, where he was a member of the Freshman All Big Eight team. He's from West Des Moines. Twenty-eight thirteen. Now Hughes and Higgins up off the Wolverine bench. They'll check back in for Michigan. And it'll be Vaught and Mills to get a breather this time. Griffin back on the court for the Wolverines. Rice stays on. Now Davis goes to the bench to get Ray Thompson up, and he'll check in to replace James Moses. Michigan just been fantastic uh, tonight, Larry, so far, but as they've gotten a little tired, I think they've used bad judgment a few times with the shots they've put up. When they get this kind of lead, you want to punish the other team and make them really work on defense. Bullard missed the second one, but Jepson got the rebound. Armstrong to the baseline, kicks it off. Garner inside, Bullard fall away, no good. Cleared by Hughes. Higgins gives to Taylor. Back to Higgins. Sean looks inside, back out to Taylor, around to Hughes. Off to Griffin. Rice has uh, Garner guarding him inside. Higgins collects from long range his first basket of the night. It's 30 to 13, Michigan. 7.40 left. All the way, and an easy lay-in for Brian Garner. His first basket of the night. 
30 to 15, Michigan. Thompson picking up Taylor in the backcourt. Kirk goes past him, brings it to the right side, feeds Griffin. Gives to Higgins, tries for two more, not long, good. Bounces outside and picked off by Armstrong. Lead pass for Thompson, couldn't handle it, went out of bounds. It'll be Michigan's ball. Ed Horton will come back in along with Roy Marble for the Hawkeyes. Bullard and uh, Garner will check out. Time is out. We have 7.16 left of the first half. Michigan leads it 30 to 15. to stay with us at halftime a special feature from Chrysler Arena as Chris McClure will take you on a tour of the Michigan Wolverines Walk of Fame it'll be a very interesting one we invite you to stay with us here's three on two as Rice brings it down gives it to Taylor moves in lays it up no good knocked into the air Horton had it picked up by Higgins he scores Quick bucket for the Wolverines, who lead by 17 now. 32-15, long range for Marble. Bounces long. Griffin had it, was fouled from behind by Thompson. Second personal on Ray Thompson. Well, you know, people wonder why Mike Griffin plays uh, for this Michigan team so much when he's very reluctant to shoot the ball at the offensive end, but there he had excellent position on the inside. Michigan a little lucky again the last time. They really wanted to put it up early as we see the shot come off. Griffin camped underneath and has Thompson, who's completely frustrated, blocked out, and he tries to go over the top. So Mike Griffin, the junior from Rosemont, Illinois, junior as far as eligibility is concerned, he's a senior academically, steps up. Shoot one on one. This Iowa team will never be out of this game just because they are so quick. They go down the other end the last time. Within four seconds, they laid the ball in at the other end. 33-15, Wolverines lead. 6.56 left of the first half. And Mike hits two straight. So it is a 34-15 Wolverine advantage. Armstrong feeds it to Thompson. Back out to Armstrong. Horton over the top, the marble, blocked from behind by Higgins. Loose ball, knocked to the side and out of bounds. It'll be Iowa's ball. Higgins saved a sure two. Crowd again with all the cat calls and the boos. Bullard will toss it in for the Hawkeyes. Marble moving in, knocked away by Higgins, and again it goes out of bounds. I'll tell you what, Horton and uh, Marble particularly, you want to guard the basket against them. I don't think either one of them are going to put it up from a lot, a lot from outside, so you really got to guard them on the inside. They're trying to get Brian Garner in, and he does check back in to replace Roy Marble. 34-15, Michigan leads, 6.34 left in the first half. Garner, a freshman from Milwaukee, the Wisconsin State Player of the Year in the 86-87 season. Horton back out to Garner, moves along the board, intercepted by Higgins. Higgins uh, Taylor, rather, drives the length of the court, and he is fouled by Bullard. That is the second personal on Matt Bullard. Again, good hustle. Kirk Taylor, he needed a lift out of him, and uh, he's certainly giving it to him. Watch it there. The man did not come to the ball. Taylor loses it a little bit here against Bullard, but he certainly draws a foul, and it was a late whistle. The ball went to, uh, verlsell has got his hand up. Price had the easy basket, if not, because Taylor found him for the easy basket. Taylor one for two at the free throw line so far tonight. He'll step up to shoot one and one. Thirty-five, fifteen, Wolverines by 20 with 6.18 left in the opening half. Taylor ready with a bonus. It's short, knocked to the side, picked up by Garner. Garner dribbles between two men, long bounce pass for Armstrong, he scores! A basket will count and the foul is called on Griffin. First personal on Griffin and uh, Armstrong will try for three. Again, the mistake was made and nobody got back. He had two Michigan players up at the other end. We're trying to steal the ball, and you cannot do that against this Iowa team. They are capable of scoring points faster than any team I've seen this year in college. Armstrong, a former All-Stater from Brother Rice, the leading scorer last season with 17, is averaging 19 this year. We'll get a substitute for him. 
after he completes his efforts at the free throw line. Three points for Armstrong. Marble back in. We'll also get Jepson back in. He'll replace Bullard for the Hawkeyes. Tom Davis always has a substitute coming in when you're shooting foul shots. He does not want you to get that foul shot out and then go with it. He wants to slow the game down so that you can go ahead and get something happening on that press. Taylor brings it up the floor. The press has not caused many problems so far tonight for Michigan. Be patient now. Let's get a good shot. Higgins from the baseline. Third basket for Sean Higgins, and the Wolverines lead 37-18 with 5.51 left. Here's Garner, left in the first half. Bounce pass to Horton. He lays it in. Horton with eight points tonight, 37-20. Mills pass deflected. Lewis Thompson scores. Mills to Taylor, lead pass for Higgins, one-on-one. -on -one. Higgins puts it up and scores. Big basket for the Wolverines. 39-22. Thompson tries for three, bounces long, slam to the floor. Taylor leaps and pulls it down. Uh, Higgins slows it up for the Wolverines. Five minutes left in the first half. Mills at the baseline. Is called for traveling. Again, that offense has to happen. Terry Mills cannot get rambunctious. They did not run but 12 seconds off the clock, and he's wheeling and dealing, and they're trying to get a turnaround 15-footer. And those are not the kind of shots that are going to keep you ahead in this game. Garner is out. Armstrong is in. Rice and Vaught check back in, replacing Higgins in. Who left besides him? Somebody else had to leave. Uh, Hughes, Hughes and, uh, yeah. Hughes and Higgins. Higgins yep. Armstrong outside. Takes a look. Whoa, he lost the ball out of bounds. Again, a little too fancy. And lost it. The Wolverines will take over, leading by 17 with 4.46 left in the half. Lead pass for Rice. Rice tries for two. Long rebound. Picked up by Taylor. 17-footer. No good. Rice with a rebound. Backs it away. Good poise. That's the kind you like to see. When you get two shots, go ahead and make them pay the price. Rice tries for three and got him. His third three-pointer of the night. And Michigan leads 42-22. Time is called by Iowa. With 4.27 left in the opening half, you're watching Passports. Michigan has won 49 consecutive games where they have scored 100 or more points. So if this pace keeps up the way it is, uh, that might be an interesting one to follow as the game goes because they're certainly on track for that now. It has been an awesome display. 16 of 36 from the floor with 16 rebounds and only two turnovers in the first half. Iowa has turned it over 10 times. 4-13 left in the opening half. Michigan in front by 20. Jepson moves it back out to Thompson. Gives it to Armstrong. 20 seconds on the shot clock. That hasn't been a factor tonight. Armstrong flips it off to the baseline. A drive by Thompson. He scores. Six points for Ray Thompson. 42-24. Michigan in front. Taylor still on the backcourt. Higgins. Mills, fall away. Got it. Terry Mills, second basket of the night. And Michigan reestablishes the 20-point lead. Armstrong to Bullard to Jepson. Pretty much left alone from long range. Marble fakes right and left, goes in. Scores! Tough shot for Roy Marble, his first basket of the night. 44-26. Well, I'll tell you, there again, you don't want to come out and guard him. He's so quick to go to the basket. You just want to let him shoot it from outside, especially at this point. You don't want to let him get the ball inside. Three minutes left in the first half, and a foul is called on Vaught. That'll be number two on Loy. And we'll walk to the other end where Les Jepson will shoot, I believe. Let's watch him if we can see underneath there as the ball goes around. You got uh, Vaught trying to fight for low position on the inside, and he was backing him out of there. Jepson doing a good job of floundering out there to 
helped draw attention to the fact that Vaught was trying to muscle him underneath. At seven feet, he's got a lot of flounder to flounder. <laughs> He'll shoot 101. Hughes coming in for Vaught. Again, uh, Rice, Robinson, and Vaught, the starters, on the bench with two fouls apiece. And I think Bill would be happy to uh, try and keep a fairly decent lead here with them on the bench and not picking up their third. Three minutes left in the opening half. Jepson, a high archer, has hit the front of the rim on the floor, picked up by Sean Higgins. He gets it out to Taylor. Michigan leading 44-26. This game, the shot clock hadn't even been uh, getting down to 30 seconds very often as we got a near steal there by uh, Marble up front. Kirk Taylor a little sloppy with it. Now it's down to 20 on the shot clock. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. Higgins tried to get inside to Hughes. He was fouled from behind by Jepson. Well, I'll tell you, they, they let him beat him up three times before he finally made that call, but I don't know why it didn't happen right away. Watch it here. He reaches over him there, keeps after him. I thought he hit him the first time when the ball got deflected. Tom Davis over there talking to the officials again. I don't know what he's complaining about. They've been giving a good mugging down here on some <laughs> of those fouls. Mark Hughes will go to the free throw line. A senior from Muskegon Reeds Puffer. He'll shoot one and one. Michigan so far seven out of ten from the foul line, and these are important shots at this point of the game. Hughes shooting nearly 61% from the foul line for the season. We'll get the bonus. 45-26. Some people from uh, his area that uh, Gal used to uh, counsel at Reeds Puffer came up and said hello before the game. They're on their way to visit some friends in Des Moines and decided to make a long weekend of it. Hughes misses the second, knocked outside by Higgins, picked up by Hughes. He gives to Griffin, and the Wolverines have a crack at three this trip down the court. Or four if they choose to shoot from long range. 2-12 left in the half. Hughes gives to Taylor. Twenty-five on the shot clock. Mills to the baseline for a fall away. It's short. Rebound pulled off by Looking Bill. The only way those shots Terry Mills has taken are any good is if they go in. And again, with everything in your favor and you got this big lead, why push up a 15 to 17 foot turnaround jump shot? Blocking foul called on Kirk Taylor, who went sprawling, but was guilty of a block. Again, Kirk going to have to try and get back. The big thing is with this Iowa team, they like to transition. Why follow them and give them a chance to catch up here with the clock stop? Make them work down at the other end. Use up some of that clock. Bryant Garner will be at the free throw line. He's shooting one on one. 45-26 is the score. Michigan in front with a minute 55 left in the half. Three points for Bryant Garner. Well, you watch what's going on under that basket with every shot. There's a lot of commotion. Bullard yeah. will come back in. Again, we're going to have a substitute, and that'll be Marble sitting there waiting to come in for the shooter. And again, Tom Davis likes to get everybody in position. So you, and almost every foul shot that Iowa shoots, they're going to have somebody coming in for the shooter, regardless of who it is. Looking Bill leaves with uh, Bullard's entrance. The shot is in and out. Higgins with a rebound. A minute 49 left in the opening half. Griffin moves it along to Mills. 45-27, Michigan in front. Michigan now can afford to try and run that clock all the way down each time here because uh, the less time that Iowa has it, the better. Less than a minute and a half remain in the first half. It's down to 10 on the shot clock. Taylor gets it to Mills. Five on the shot clock. Mills from long range. Not good. And the rebound is taken by Bullard. Get back. Garner brings it up the floor quickly to the free throw line. Loses the ball. Chased down by Moses. Picked up by Horton. Backs his way in. Puts a shot up. No good. Hughes had it momentarily. Knocked out of bounds by Horton. And it'll be Michigan's ball with 57 seconds left in the opening half. And that last time you had Higgins and somebody else that sort of looked at the ball, and that's the worst thing in the world you can do with Iowa because they're going to streak five guys down the floor, and if you make one or two moves at them down the floor, you're in trouble. As Glenn Rice and uh, Rob Palinka both coming in the game here for Higgins and Griffin. 
Interesting substitution with 57 seconds left in the first half. Rice has two personals. Michigan in front, 45-27. In it comes to Hughes. 11-second difference here on the shot clock. Michigan will use it all up if they can. It's fun to have Mills come out and be able to guard the ball because that means Bullard's got to come out and guard him, and that's not an easy assignment. 25 on the shot clock. At this point, you'd almost not even uh, let him have another shot if you can hold that ball and run the clock down. Down to a dozen on the shot clock. Eight on the shot clock. Taylor inside to Rice, puts it up, in and out. Knocked into the air, tipped to the side. 12 seconds left as it's brought down by Armstrong. And he's called for carrying the ball, and that is a break. We'll give it back to Michigan. Seven seconds ago, that ball did everything but come down. Higgins will come off the bench here as a designated three-point shooter, and he's going to come in for Hughes. Good move again. Both coaches really shoveling everybody in and out and using a lot of strategy, every possession. It'll be Michigan's ball with seven seconds left in the half. Wolverines in front, 45-27. Taylor across the line, tries the jumper. It's short on the floor. Moses picks it up. That's the end of the first half. A very impressive first half of play for the Michigan Wolverines, who rolled early and throughout much of the first half, been establishing as much as a 20-point lead and leads with a comfortable 45-27 advantage at the half. We invite you to stay with us. Special feature coming up. We'll take a look at the statistics, the standings, and scores from other Big Ten games. It's all coming up at halftime on Passports. It is a 45-27 halftime lead for the University of Michigan. The Wolverines led by as many as 20 during the first half. They used some solid shooting percentages early and wound up with a whole bunch of shots, as these statistics will indicate. And that was a factor in the way they played in this first half. Well, they're way below their average. Uh, believe it or not, they shot less percentage-wise than Iowa did the first half, uh, just under 39%. But they got 44 shots at the basket, while Iowa was only able to get 28. And again, uh, turnovers uh, were not uh, that much of a factor. I think we had 14. Well, they were 14 for Iowa, only three for Michigan. And I think two of those came against that pressure. And I'm not sure they can play as well against that pressure the second half as they did the first but let's keep our fingers crossed. It was pretty impressive, all right. Glenn Rice led all scores in the first half. He had 13 points for Michigan. Other scoring, Higgins wound up with eight, and Robinson seven. While Iowa was paced by Horton, he had eight. Thompson scored six. Jepson had four. The two big shooters for Iowa, B.J. Armstrong, who averaged 19, Roy Marble, who averaged 18.7, were held to three and two points respectively in the first half. And again, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the outstanding defense for Michigan. They were really, really uh, going out there. Even uh, guys coming off the bench, Higgins doing a good job of uh, defense, and he's usually a little lax in that category. Iowa putting it in play to open the second half. The other thing will be important here, Larry, is see what happens with the fouls here early in the second half. Horton dishes it off, and the traveling violation is called against Bullard. Very obvious to see what Coach Tom Davis talked about. He threw the ball inside to try and cause some pressure on the inside. Full court press continues for Iowa. Out it comes to Rice. Ramil Robinson brings it down the floor. Off it comes to Griffin. Robinson to the side for Rice. Here's Vaught. It's short. Armstrong tips it away, but a foul is called on Mills. That's a second personal on Terry Mills. Again, Vaught may be a little bit out of his range, but he's such a good shooter, I don't think you can ever put the uh, red light on him so that he can't take that 15 to 17 foot jump shot. 45-27 the score. Michigan in front. We're 30 seconds into the second half. Armstrong, bounce pass, knocked away by Robinson. It'll be Iowa's ball. Bullard will toss it in for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Marble off balance, missed the shot. Thompson tried to tip, picked up by Horton. He scores. 
Michigan does not look as fierce as they were on the boards early in the first half. They look a little tentative. Rice down the right side, off to Robinson, and he backs it away. Griffin, cross court, Rice for three, partially blocked, Horton with a rebound. Armstrong, the length of the court, puts it up, bend off. Tipped to the side, chased down by Bullard. Bullard for three. Cleared by Vaught. Been nice if he'd have gotten that out. He had four white shirts around him. If they could have gotten it out and run, they'd have been better off. Almost looks like Coach Frieders told him not to be in a hurry on the offensive end. Rice for two. Long rebound taken by Marble. Armstrong, the length of the floor, scores. Forty-five, thirty-one. They're coming to their feet at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. Oh, great play by Robinson underneath. Just doing a great job. Robinson reverse layup. Put up by Marble. 47-33. Robinson. Oh, this crowd's in a frenzy. They just got to poise it up here. Take your time. Griffin to the baseline. Robinson for three. Not good. Bought with a oh, rebound. Oh, boy. Bott puts it to the side. Mills misses. Cleared by Horton. Horton bounces it off his knee. Griffin comes up with it. To Rice. Down to Vaught. Vaught for the bucket. 49-33. Vaught got away with a push on the inside that last time, but again, they didn't get a basket or a shot at the basket, so that I guess wouldn't count. Horton brings it out front. Blocked by Griffin. Out to Ramil. Two on two. Robinson has it stripped away. Gets it back. Griffin. His pass deflected. Griffin to Mills. Mills moves it back out to Griffin. Good uh, job by Michigan. They didn't have it there. It looked like they might have had a fast break. Might as well poise it up. Griffin back to Rice. 20 on the shot clock. Griffin out front. Gives it to Vaught. Deals it off for Mills. Jumpers up and in. Nice patience by Michigan. Mills did a little turnaround jumper. That turnaround jumper is a lot more effective from 6 than it is from 16. Horton inside. Puts it off the glass. No good. Gets it back. Moves in for a layup and scores. 12 points for Ed Horton. 51-35. Four minutes gone in the second half. Rice for three. Long rebound taken by Mills. He moves in for a 10-footer. No good. Tipped by Vaught. No good. And Bullard rebounds. Brought out by Thompson. He goes crashing. Oh, oh a blocking geez. foul is called on Mills. I don't believe that. Unbelievable. I think he traveled before he even got in there. Watch how many steps he takes here. One, two. That yeah, might have been a good call, but he traveled before that. I tell you, Michigan just couldn't get the ball at the other end. Vaught almost had a slam dunk on a rebound, and uh, things seem to be turning a little bit here. And uh, Michigan looks a little reluctant. Rice doesn't look like he wants to shoot it. And, you always wonder, what did they get at halftime from Bill Frieder? I think they probably got to be a little more patient, but uh, there's times when you got to run it and put it up there. Time is out. We have 15.42. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We may not have a timeout. Let's see if they are. I thought Tom Davis was going to get a technical there for just a moment. Well, uh, what happens here, if that was a shooting foul, you do not take the break if there's a shot. You take the break after he makes the basket. You cannot have a timeout and let that kid go off the foul line and sit for a minute and a half and then come back out on the floor. That time has been allowed, and we have 15.42 left in the game. Michigan in front, 51.35. We'll be back in a moment on Pass Sports. 51. 35 is the score. Michigan is in front. 
It'll be Thompson at the free throw line. Again, tough situation there. Uh, Mills, again, not afraid to step in there, but I think it may have been a travel. He took a couple of good steps before he got in there, but it doesn't matter. He's going to the foul line anyway. Thompson, Illinois Player of the Year last season. That's James Moses waiting to check in. Again, they want to get that press going. Moses comes in to replace Thompson. It's 51-36, Michigan in front. And we're going to get uh, Horton coming in. Garner leaves, Jepson is out, and Marble is back in. So, Looking Bill has also checked in for Iowa. Tom Davis keeps them moving. Taylor hustles it up the court. Higgins gives to Hughes, around to Ramil. Taylor down the lane, dishes it off, layup by Higgins. Nice job by Kirk Taylor, made the penetration, and as we get a layup at the other end by Marble, I tell you, you can't fall asleep on this team. They'll just kill you if you do that and don't hustle back. Nearly five minutes into the second half, Michigan in front, 53-38. Bach gives it to Taylor, to Robinson, to Hughes. If you make a basket a year end, you better hightail it down the other end and make them run the clock. Inside to Higgins. Higgins turns, fall away, not good, and a foul is called. It'll be on Loy Vaught. Tell you again, the reason that happened is that was not the kind of shot you want. I don't think your other teammates are going to expect you to shoot this turnaround jumper fadeaway and all that traffic, and Vaught didn't really push on that, but he had his arms inside and got caught against Horton. That's... Uh, critical for Michigan as the fouls start to pile up on the big guys inside. Third personal on Loy Vaught. Armstrong across to Horton working. Hughes stayed right with him and Horton gets it back. Then just about he did throw it out of bounds. Again tried to be too fancy with it but uh, Kirk Taylor had the ball there and uh, he and Hughes had a little little trouble communicating. Michigan had a fast break going at the other end as Glenn Rice comes back in for Vaught who picked up his third. 14.36 left in the game. Michigan in front by 15. Hughes will toss it in. Taylor moves it up to Ramil. Robinson feeds Rice. Stops, doesn't take it, moves it back out to Robinson. Such a good shooter. You don't want him to get too conservative. Higgins bounces long, cleared by Armstrong. B.J. up the court for the Hawkeyes. You can see the turnovers weighing heavily. Iowa has had problems all through this game. Turnaround by Horton is no good. Pillar, Bullard tips it in. A basket will not count. He has called for a foul. That's the third personal on Matt Bullard. I don't know what the crowd's booing about that one. Rice with great position on the inside just went over the top for the tip in. Iowa much more aggressive on their offensive board than they were the first half. They probably have as many rebounds offensively this half as they had the whole first half. Rice should have shot that last ball. You see him come down around the wing, and then uh, Higgins winds up throwing one up there from farther away. Hughes lobs it into Robinson. Off to Higgins. Back to Robinson. He goes all the way. He scores. Nine points for Ramil, and the Wolverines are back in front, 55-38. From outside, a jumper is in for Marble. He has eight points. He had just two in the first half. I'd still make them beat me from that range rather than give them the basket on the inside. Intercepted by Garner. Garner moving in, off balance, fades Bullard, reverse layup is good. Down the 13, Jeez, oh, ball knocked out of bounds, it'll be Iowa's ball. I don't believe it. This got tackled and lost the ball out of bounds. Emil Robinson made a mistake on the last interception. You watch this foul there. Gets knocked out of bounds. No call. I'm not sure that he even hit the ball in the box. I started to say Ramil did not make, do a good job last time down. He waited for the ball instead of coming to it. He wanted a fast break. Can't do that against that pressure. Time is out at Carver Hawkeye Arena. 15,500 are up and roaring. 55-42, Michigan leads.
We've got more exciting Big Ten action for you next Thursday night here on Passports. It'll feature these Wolverines against the Purdue Boilermakers. We'll have it for you live from Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. Airtime is 8 o'clock on Pass. Ten shooting percentages here so far this half. Michigan 5 out of 12. Iowa 7 out of 12. 58%. Michigan at 42%. 55-42 is the score. We have 13-29 left in this ball game. The Iowa Hawkeyes making a surge here now after trailing by 20. They've gotten it down by the 13-point spread. And with the ball, it'll be Roy Marble tossing it into play. Comes into Garner. Back it goes to Marble. Marble over Rice. It's short. Thompson puts it up and in. Mike Griffin not checking Thompson out. He went to the basket. Another rebound. And it comes to Rice, ahead to Robinson, two on one, Robinson to Vaught, lost the ball on the floor, dug up by Thompson. Garner brings it back. Garner all the way, puts it up, a circus shot, he is hammered. Foul will be on Mills, he is fourth. That'll, that'll hurt him a little bit, but you look at Garner here, who, uh, you know, is a freshman, but all he does is beats Michigan down the floor. You gotta stop him, make him pick up the ball. They're on a run right now. They've outscored Michigan 8-2 to two here and more turnovers in the last flurry than we've had the first half for Michigan. I think they seem like they're a little reluctant to put the ball up at the other end, and that's not how they built this lead. The crowd has really gotten back in the game. Hughes into the ball game to replace Mills as Brian Garner goes to the free throw line. First time this game, Iowa does not have anybody ready to come in after the foul shot. Michigan's lead stands at 11, 55-44, seven minutes gone in the second half. Closest it's been since the 13-30 mark in the first half. He misses two straight, then Rice grabs the rebound. Basket would be uh, an important commodity for the Wolverines this trip down the court. Rice having a hard time getting that ball off with Bullard guarding him on the wing. Robinson gets the screen from Hughes. Now lobs it to Griffin. Around to Hughes. Inside to Rice. Double team. Back out to Griffin for the jumper. It's short. Rice with a rebound. Glenn takes it to the side. Back out to Griffin. Griffin, one of his rare shots. That was almost from three-point range. Griffin to Vaught. Robinson inside to Hughes. Right hand hook is in. Nice basket. He really, as you mentioned, needed that one. Armstrong or uh, Garner coming down against Robinson. Forced up, around and out. Cleared by Marble. Puts it up and in. The basket will count. It'll go to the free throw line. Can't believe the difference in rebounds. Michigan just getting out rebounded on the offensive end. Something fierce. Too many guys standing around letting those white shirts beat him to the board. Call that on Griffin, did he? Yes. He wasn't anywhere near him, but sure somebody might have hit him in there. His second personal, and Marble will try for a three-point play. He has really come alive in the second half. Problem is the length of time that uh, it's taken Iowa to get anything going. They come down there, and in five, six seconds, they're getting the ball, the ball up there and then rebounding it. Substitution, B.J. Armstrong in for Roy Marble. Taylor checks in for the Wolverines, replacing Griffin. In my imagination is Glenn Rice hesitating to shoot the ball all of a sudden for some reason. I don't know. It's hard to explain, isn't it? So he makes it awful tough to inboard, in the inbound the balls with uh, Hubbard. And I'll tell you, he, Bullard does a great job. Had Lloyd Vaughn all the way open down the floor all by himself, and they couldn't find him. Rice from the corner, got him. Six points from the two-point range for Rice. He also has three three-pointers to go with him. Well, I tell you, this is unbelievable. You start to write down a score, and Iowa's down at the other end in scoring range. Michigan in front by a dozen. 11:44 left in the ball game. It's deflected out of bounds. Who's going to get it? It's going to be Iowa. See the turnovers. Bullard lobs it in to Horton. Reverses, puts it up, and roll. 
rolls off. Picked up by Robinson. Robinson is hammered from behind by Brian Garner. I don't think they had any choice but to call that one. It's been <laughs> physical out there. Boom. Gives him a good shot with the elbow as well. If you're gonna get the foul, you might as well make it pay. This has been no place for the timid this evening. Only the second uh, team foul on Iowa this half. Unbelievable James. the way they've been going to the boards. James Moses into the ball game now, replacing Thompson. And now Roy Marble checks back in to replace Garner for Iowa. <laughs> Jepson has returned to the lineup for the Hawkeyes. He will guard Hughes, who will be inbounding the ball. Lobs it into Rice. Ooh, that's a tough pass. Now to Vaught. He's alone. Oh, it was stripped away by Moses, who came from nowhere. Down it comes to Horton. Intercepted by Rice. Three on two. Rice the distance. He is fouled by Jepson. Two shots coming up for Rice. Well, I'll tell you, Vaught should have dribbled that one time down there, but I think he thought the Iowa player was going to get a chance down there. But again, the bounce pass here. Michigan doing an excellent job of picking off those bounce passes, and Rice just uses his quickness to beat Jepson down the floor, gets hit. I think he's a little afraid about going up and slamming that one, so he didn't get hurt. Great play by James Moses a moment ago in stopping... Lair Loy Vaught, who looked to be going in uncontested, he came from nowhere, knocked it away. Michigan leading by a dozen, 11-24 left of the ball game. It has been a wild one at Iowa City. I tell you, I think Glenn Rice has played as well as anybody I can remember in recent time in Michigan with that shooting ability, but he looked a little tired on that foul shot. He's been in there quite a bit tonight. He hits one of two, has 16 points. Foul in the backcourt. Taylor holding the left arm just above the elbow. Tell you one thing, uh, Iowa's going to be on the line here, and that'll help him in the long run. You watch him here as he comes up and trying to hold Armstrong from getting the ball, and all he's trying to do is slow things down there. He could have done that a lot easier without grabbing a hold of him there. Marble moving in for an eight-footer. It's short. Loy Vaught knocks it high into the air. Rice retrieves it. He stepped on the sideline. Iowa's had five turnovers this half, and uh, the statistics have him turning the ball over all five times for Iowa. Jepson will toss it in. 13-point Michigan lead. Nine minutes left in the ball game. Armstrong to Marble. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, Horton, he's got to be called for traveling. I don't know if you were watching Horton that time. I kept an eye on him. And I'll tell you, he's given Mark Hughes all he can handle underneath. But he is a load. He really positions low inside him. So not surprised. Uh, I'm surprised that they didn't try to get him the ball in there. Because he's tough to handle. They are two horses, Hughes and Horton, both 230, 235, 6'8. Robinson all the way scores. Nice move. He just really, really froze Jepson on that play. 62 47. Seven, seven straight points for Michigan. Three point try by Moses. No good. Here comes Vaught ahead to Robinson. Robinson puts it up and a foul is called. This will go against Armstrong. Michigan really responded when it got down to 10 points. They've outscored them seven straight points. You watch Robinson there with the fake. BJ again in pretty good position. If he'd have stayed on the ground, I think he'd have had a chance of getting the uh, getting the charge call. Three men coming in for Iowa now. Thompson is back in. Jepson returns. Griner is on. See, so many times there's still a long way to go in this game, but Iowa makes that run, cuts it to 10, and Michigan able uh, again to build that lead back up a little bit. Robinson shooting two for the Wolverines. He has 12 points for the Maize and Blue. Michigan leading 63-47. Robinson hits two straight from the line. Marble got him. Boy, is he hot. He has 13 points, 11 of them in the second half. Double pressure on Taylor in big trouble. He is forced out of bounds. It'll be Michigan's ball. Put that ball right where you want it against that trap. You put it in a corner. You got two big guys guarding you, and you got the out-of-bounds line on the baseline and the sideline. Tough situation. 
Hughes will toss it in. For the most part, Michigan has handled the press exceedingly well tonight. This, these are two tough passes to Rice, but Glenn has saved them both. We're halfway through the second half. Robinson goes across the line to the free throw line all the way, and he is fouled by Jepson. That's going to be on Garner Pryor. Well, he was take, also nailed by Jepson. Either Garner or Thompson. I'm not sure who they're going to call this one on. Going to, going to get two shots. You watch him, though. Nice hesitation dribble in there. I think you're right. It was, uh, was Garner. Robinson will be shooting two for Michigan. I should know you don't make many mistakes. <laughs> I tell you, you can't look away in this one tonight. These are important free throws for the Wolverines at this stage, halfway through the second half. Michigan in front by 15. But they have fought off the surge that Iowa put up there to open this second half and have reestablished a 16-point lead. Here comes Garner. Tell you they got to guard the basket here. Don't let them penetrate. Help out on the inside. Make them shoot that long one. There is the long one by Thompson. No good. Cleared by Vaughn. Out it comes on the far side. Lead pass for Rice. Too high. He was alone. But the pass soared over his head. Brought Bill Freider doing a little pirouette down there. He is beside himself. An easy two got away. The big basket could have gone back up to 18 uh, in there, but Kirk Taylor saw him. That's the important thing. Iowa again really pressuring. They've got to find those guys deep when they're open. Horton really leaning on the inside on Hughes in there. Let's watch it. And a pushing foul is called. This will be on Thompson, I believe. Big foul. Will be. That's his third. 9.38 left in the game. Michigan leads at 65-49. Sean Higgins comes back in to replace Kirk Taylor. Looks like it's easy to get that ball in, but I'm telling you, when you got a guy like uh, Bullard at 6'10", guarding the out-of-bounds guy, it's tough to make that entry pass. Rice gives it to Robinson, who will be picked up by Thompson in the backcourt. Thompson has to be a little careful now. He's picked up three. That's knocked out of bounds by Garner. To Michigan's ball on the side. This has got to be a tough game to officiate. Every time you make a call against anybody in a white shirt, you're wrong. And not only the players, but about 15,000 plus fans here uh, feeling that way. There has not been one good call made here tonight, according <laughs> to these fans. Robinson goes past Marble. Hughes reverse layup is Ooh. in. He'll go to the free throw line. Nice pass by Robinson. Find it, Hughes. He got smacked and he went in and laid it off the glass. Watch here again, the penetration. Iowa's using a team that uses that bounce pass on the inside. That was just a perfect play by Robinson. Ed Horton picks up his second personal. And Hughes will try to complete a three-point play. Mark with five points for the Mays in blue. Michigan getting great play off the bench. Higgins came in and played his best defense, I think, the first half. And Hughes, uh, just solid defense as well against Horton. Rebound claimed by Thompson. Garner brings it down. Garner tried to get a bounce pass inside. Thompson picked it up and gets the shot off and scores. Tough play for Thompson. He has 11 points. 67-51. Robinson heads up the court to the baseline. Off Jeez, balance, no missed the shot. Horton with the rebound. <laughs> no contact. Lead pass for Garner. Flips it back to Bullard. Loose on the four. Picked up by Garner. He feeds Bullard. Flips it across. Broken up by Rice. Dive for by Bullard. He tries for three. Got him. Holy smoky. 67-54, Michigan. 8.40 left in the ball game. Griffin wheels it to Rice. Underneath, Higgins tried to get the shot away, and Bullard fouled him. Fourth personal on Matt Bullard. A couple of golden opportunities for Michigan under there in that last flurry, and they just couldn't get it. Again, Higgins trying to shoot it before he got it. Fortunately, kept it in bounds. He goes up to shoot it. Bullard uh, getting a little body on that one. Roy Marble into the ball game, replacing Brian Garner for Iowa. Bullard has also gone out of the ball game. And Jepson is in to replace, uh, Moses in to replace him. 
Well, I'll tell you, this team can just put them on the board so quickly, Iowa, that uh, Michigan gets it back up to a comfortable 18, and they hit a basket and a three-pointer after they did everything but throw the ball away at this end. You get the big Bullard hitting a three-pointer, and it's back to 13 again. That's Mrs. Tom Davis, the Hawkeyes coach's wife, looking on intently as Higgins goes to the free-throw line to shoot two. 11 points for Sean. 68-54 Wolverines. Horton with a rebound. Outlet to Armstrong. Armstrong takes it to the baseline, puts it up, he is fouled. Got to guard the basket again. They're not going to kill you from outside. I think that there's a strength that Marble and uh, Armstrong and Horton have is they like to go to the basket. Ramil again coming out in there and got the foul on Higgins and Hughes doing a good job of making sure the basket doesn't go in. Second personal on Sean Higgins. B.J. Armstrong goes to the free throw line to shoot two. There was a great comment. One well, of the fans just yelled, ref, I hope you get a, take all that money you're getting for this game and deposit it in a savings and loan. <laughs> <laughs> That's creative thinking, isn't That's it? That's right. <laughs> Armstrong misses. It stays at 68-54. 8-17 left in the ball game. They only knew how little these guys get paid for going through this torment every time they referee a game. They Gotta love it, don't they? So much. <laughs> to stay with it. Six points for B.J. Armstrong. Far below his season's average. Marble was below at halftime, but he has come roaring back in the second half. Here's Romeo off to Higgins, and it's stripped away and knocked out of bounds by Armstrong. Good three-on-two break, though. Romeo doing a good job of getting it off to Higgins on the uh, right wing. He's a little bit ahead of Vaught on the left-hand side. I don't even know what officials make, but my point is it isn't enough, regardless of what it is, to take the torment that those guys do. Mills and Rice come back in. Ball may have been the Higgins on the wing a little early. Deflection out of bounds. Higgins again lost it uh, on his way to the basket. Mills will toss Three it out. in. Bad pass. Armstrong intercepts. Armstrong across the lane. Stripped away from him by Griffin. Picked up underneath. Put up by Marble. He scores. 68-57, Michigan's lead down to 11 again. Deflected pass inbound at Armstrong. Off to Moses, got him. It's down to nine. Bad pass, Rice is clobbered by Moses. Foul is called. Bill Frieder frantically trying to get a timeout as Wolverines really throwing that ball up for grabs. Got Mills taking it out. Luckily, uh, Moses clipped Rice on that one because he had no chance to get the ball. They got to get the ball in bounds and over to Ramil and just make it easy like they did the whole first half. Wolverines held a little team meeting at center court during that momentary delay to talk themselves back into some poise. With 7.45 left in the ball game, Michigan's lead has dwindled to nine points, 68-59. Apparently, the fans have been throwing some objects on the floor. The public address announcer has asked them to refrain, and that has met with another chorus. The Hawkeyes have not shown a great deal of good sportsmanship here tonight. The Hawkeye fans, we should say. They love their Hawks. They come out here and cheer and yell and do everything they can. If this was in Indiana, Bobby Knight would have put a, an end to that yeah. hurry. We were there and doing the game, and he just came on the PA and said, we don't throw things at Indiana. Rice quiets them quickly as he hits the front half of a one-on-one. -on -one. Again, it's a 10-point Michigan margin. 7.45 left in the game. Hawkeyes again. Boom, boom, boom. If they get those turnovers, can make this game tight in an awful hurry. Two clutch free throws by Glenn Rice, and Michigan is back in front by 11. Time is out with 7.45 left in the ball game. Michigan in front by 11. You're watching Passports. Our pass cameras and microphones will be at Mud Ice Arena in East Lansing tomorrow night, where the Michigan State Spartans have an opportunity to close in on the regular season CCHA title. Ron Mason's team needs just three more points 
to clinch the championship. They'll play the Miami Redskins tomorrow night. We'll have it all for you live at 7.30 here on Pass. Armstrong from three point. 70 to 62. It's down to eight. 7.25 left in the game. Griffin, Devok. Oh, he bounced it off the referee and it came right to Griffin. Over the top to Mills, puts it up and in. Nice play by uh, Griffin, finding somebody underneath. Tell you, they set that double pick at the high post for uh, Armstrong. Bullard wide open. Great pass from Marble. So many people now watching the big guy in there, they got to go to the ball and uh, guard the guy with the best basketball. Mills from outside, got him back. A Rice, I'm sorry. That's uh, 19 for Glenn Rice. Three-pointer for Moses, not good. Lost by Horton out of bounds. Uh, but Griffin dove at it. Ramil Robinson had the ball. You can never fault a guy for uh, really diving on the floor, but Ramil had the ball in his hands, and Griffin dove at it. He didn't see Ramil and knocked it out of bounds. Michigan lucky there. They didn't get the ball going back on there. Iowa hitting those boards for the second and third opportunities again. Double check Rice's totals. He has 20 points now rather than 19. Yep. I'll tell you, the uh, thing is, Marble's been so tough for Iowa that they start looking at him and ignoring the rest of the guys. On the inside, Rice, five out of nine, uh, 13 points this half. Marble uh, really putting the points up. And gets three more. So it's 74-67 with 6.20 left in the ball game. Michigan in front, Griffin wheels it down to Rice. Here's three on two. Back it goes to Glenn. Over to Robinson, knocked away, but Griffin picks it up. Feeds Rice inside to Hughes. Back to Rice for three. It's an air ball taken by Horton. Out it comes to Armstrong. He collides with Ramil, and Robinson is going to be called for the foul. Well, they be fortunate here with still six minutes to go here. Ramil got to get back and guard the basket. Bill Frieder wants a timeout. None of his players see him, though, because he's over. They're huddling underneath the basket. Finally, somebody sees him and calls a timeout. So Iowa has pulled within seven after Michigan had led by as many as 20. We have 6.04 left. Stay with us. We'll have a late starter for you a week from this evening. 10.30 is air time as we feature the Detroit Pistons and Sacramento Kings. NBA basketball live from Sacramento, California. We invite you to join us Thursday night, February 16th at 10.30. Michigan really gone cold from the field. They've only had two field goals in the last uh, four minutes of the game. And again, they seem a little reluctant at times to go to the basket. Gotten some foul shots, but it hasn't helped. Built that lead to 17, 18 points, and since then they've been able to get nothing from the field. B.J. Armstrong shooting one and one. Seventy-four, sixty-eight. Four sixty-nine, six oh four left. Comes down to Rice, broken up by the Hawkeyes, and Armstrong backs it away. He tries for three. Got him. It's a two-point lead for the Wolverines. Five forty-six left in the game. Robinson across to Rice. Back to Robinson, and he'll back it away. 15,000 are on their feet at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Here's Rice. Missed the shot, but a foul is called on Jepson. It's number four on Big Les. Tell you again, the turnover. They continue to try and throw that ball long to Rice on the outside, and I don't know exactly what happened, but Rice there goes up and got slapped on the arm by Jepson. He never off that much on those shots without getting fouled. That was a couple, three inches long. Crowd's been the sixth, seventh, and eighth player here recently. They've really been yelling. Even when they were behind by 15, they were on their feet. Jepson checks out Matt Bullard back into the ballgame. He is playing now with four. 
Loy bought into the ball game for Michigan. Kirk Taylor has checked back in. Rice shooting two. Wolverines lead by two. B.J. Armstrong looks like he's possessed out there. He's coming out trying to do this one all by himself. He's been tough the last couple of minutes. 75-72. Rice hits two important free throws for the Wolverines who lead by four with five and a half minutes left. Armstrong to the baseline, bounce pass. Thompson, fall away, bounces long. Horton stripped away, knocked out of bounds, and let's see. Good job by uh, Ramiro getting it off uh, there. Otherwise, they'd have had another easy one. Watch it throw it up here, and they just go to the board. Look at Horton clear everybody out. Ramiro just stripped it out of there. And I don't know where he said the ball's out of bounds. He called a foul on Ramiro on yeah. that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. His fourth. Huh? That's a tough foul. Big Ed Horton goes to the free throw line. I didn't see it the first time, and I didn't see it the second time, but you give him that second rebound on the inside, that's what you're going to wind up with. Horton with a dozen for the Hawkeyes. 5-19 left in the game. Michigan in front by four. The lead is down to three. Comes in to Vaught, gives to Taylor. His pass is intercepted by Thompson to Bullard. Off to Marble, moves in, he scores! 76-75. Turnover has been unbelievable this half. This is the kind of Iowa team you're used to seeing in that press. And Horton again coming up and smacking Robinson. And he's been lipping the whole time. And makes it tough. 5.08 left. Ramil heads up the court. Flips it off. Went right through Taylor's hands. Saved for a moment. Picked up by Horton. Look out. Blocked. But a foul is called on Taylor. Everything's gone Iowa's way this second half. And you got to give a lot of the credit to the uh, tenacious defense they're playing. Horton again deflecting it there. Going all the way. Kirk going up. And Said he committed the foul and then put Horton back on the line again. They take the lead here. This crowd, crowd's been in the game the whole time anyway. Can't get much louder. Time has been called by Michigan with 4.56 left in the game. The Wolverines are in front by one. So it has been a tremendous comeback for the Iowa Hawkeyes. The pressing defense did not cause Michigan many problems in the first half, but it has been a big factor in the Iowa's come from behind effort here in the late stages of this second half. Again, it's been the lack of field goals that uh, has really cost Michigan. They've gone to the foul line to get a few points, uh, but again, we'll go back to the 10:42 uh, point when they had a uh, 15-point lead. After that, they've only scored three field goals and about eight foul shots. But at the other end, Iowa's been stealing the ball and getting the easy shots. And when they miss it, they're getting the second opportunities. They're getting fouled underneath. We'll have these Wolverines again for you a week from tonight. Airtime 7.30 as the Purdue Boilermakers come to Chrysler Arena. Uh, game time is 8 o'clock on that one. The Boilers and the Wolverines a week from tonight on Pass Sports. Michigan has been outscored 48 to 31 here in the second half as Iowa has come to within one. As we talked about at halftime, it's a game average, isn't it? You knew this game was a long way from being over. I think the disappointing thing if you're a Michigan fan and a Wolverine fan is the fact they have not been able to get to the board at the other end, plus the number of turnovers. Griffin will come into the ball game for Michigan, but later, as Horton goes to the free throw line. I don't quite understand that, but... Uh, two. two shots coming up for Ed Horton. He's a 56% shooter from the line through the season. He has hit one of three so far this evening. He can tie the game with this one. 
So the Hawkeyes are all the way back. They have tied this game at 76 each with 4.56 remaining. Griffin comes in to replace Taylor for the maize and blue. Again, they come to their feet in Iowa City as Michigan tries to put it into play. Mills runs the baseline. Lobs it up the floor, and again it's broken up by Thompson. This time, Ramil gets it, and Thompson is called for his fourth foul. Just soon had that one uh, without being whistled because he had two on one at the other end. Mills running the length of the floor to try and get away from uh, Bullard in there. I think if I was Michigan, I might put another guy out of bounds at the other side, Larry, as you've seen a lot of teams do, because they're having a hard time getting it in. Throw it to the other guys out of bounds, which is allowed, and then uh, you'll have a little easier time entering without that big pressure. Robinson is four for six from the line tonight. Now five for seven as he puts Michigan back in front. Again, only two seconds going off the clock there. This uh, last five minutes will take forever to play here. But Tom Davis uh, saw in the game against uh, a couple of times this year. He'll mix milk sack clock with substitutions and fouls as well as any college team I've seen this year. Seventy-eight, seventy-six, Michigan. 4.53 left. Need to stop the Hawks here one time and see if they can build that lead a little bit. Double post at the top again. Armstrong dishes it off. Thompson off the glass. Tipped once by Bullard. In the air. Grabbed by Mills. There again, Michigan would have run that ball the first half and they didn't there. Robinson down the middle off the Mills for a jumper. No good. Marble. Uncontested rebound. He didn't follow that shot though. If he'd have followed it, he'd have had the rebound. Armstrong dishes it off to Bullard. Inside, put up by Marble, blocked by Mills. It's going to be called goaltending. Not sure that should have been goaltending. He was going to bank that ball, and the ball cannot be on its way down until after it hits the backboard. You're not going to see it probably from this angle, but that ball is going to be banked. I think the reason they call is he did hit the basket. Marble been sensational this half. Game is tied, 78 points each. Mills leaves the game. Vaught is in. Griffin is in, and uh, be Robinson, Higgins, and Rice to fill out the complement of five. Got everybody up the floor here and really struggling to get it inbounds. Comes in to Robinson, almost let it get away. Could have had a travel there, too. Robinson, lead for Higgins. Griffin to Rice. A great advantage when you got uh, Jepson and Bullard in the game. Uh, they can guard Rice on the wing, and he won't get those jump shots off quite as easily. Knocked out of bounds by Ed Horton. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Game is tied, 78 points each, and Terry Mills will come back into the Michigan lineup. He'll replace Sean Higgins. You want to try and stay ahead if you're Michigan just because of the fact you're going to get uh, a lot of milk in the clock going on. Mills shot his block from behind. Brought down the floor by Garner. He's double teamed. Loses it. Picked up by Rice. And he's driven out of bounds. They call him for traveling. Holy smoke. I'll tell you. Unbelievable. Had to have either a charge on Robinson or a block on, uh, on Armstrong under the basket. They come down here and hard to believe three officials here. You watch this as a bounce pass goes on the inside. See if Rice gets pushed at all. <laughs> Look at him. Push the both hands. Both hands. Yes. Then they wonder why everybody criticized the Big Ten officials. That's ridiculous when you got three officials and they don't see that play. Armstrong at the baseline in the corner. Game is tied at 78. 342 left. Need to stop him here. Playing a little catch in the perimeter, and uh, Marble was just flattened underneath. Yeah, Griffin going to the basket, but Horton. here's Horton. Shot short, cleared by Vaught, triple teamed, held ball, quick count. Got to get be that, Michigan's ball, however. Got to get the ball out though and run with it. With three guys on him like that, he pivoted two times, and not being critical of Vaught, but they got to get the ball out and run with it if they're going to stay away from the Iowa pressure, and they've been reluctant to do that the second half as the scores start to tighten up a little bit. Matt Bullard comes back into the ball game for the Hawkeyes. He'll defend against Mills, who will toss it in. 
comes Ramil. Good job. The game is tied at 78. Rice for three, short. Rebound by Mills. Her 15-footer is short. Mills again, puts it back up, and he's hammered. Horton. Um, Mills will go to the line. Horton going to get whistled down on the inside. Again, give Mills credit. He goes after it here. He misses it. Didn't really take a lot of time, but that time at least he went to the basket and got the rebound rather than sitting there watching it. And he's been guilty of that a few times in his career at Michigan. Third personal on Ed Horton. Hughes comes in. He'll replace Loy Vaught. Mills first trip to the free throw line tonight. He'll shoot a pair. That breaks the 78-all tie and puts Michigan back in front. Two straight for Terry Mills, and Michigan leads by a basket with 2.59 left. Marble to the baseline, brings it back out front, knocked away, chases it down. They got in the way with a push off on the inside there. Mills doing a good job defensively. Michigan really got to guard the basket here. Double pick for Armstrong at the top here. Good job by Ramil of fighting through there. Armstrong outside connects. Reties the game this time at 80 points. Not quite sure what happens every time, but somehow the ball find, winds up getting loose. The officials have to chase after it, and then Michigan has a hard time entering the ball. Oh, he had Ramil there. He should have given it to him. 2.25 left in the game. They're at the 10-second clock. Michigan did it again across the line, and it's turned back to the Hawkeyes. Terry Mills had Ramil Robinson open in the middle early, and he should have given it to him. And again, that turnover, just that pressure defense. Jepson will come back for Iowa. Not been many possessions this half where Michigan's been able to stop Iowa. They've just really been taking it at the Wolverines after falling behind so far the first half. First opportunity to lead since the first basket of the game. Double screen again. Marble gives it to Armstrong. Horton in the corner. Cross court, Thompson tries for three, bounces long, knocked to the baseline, out of bounds. Iowa's ball. In Iowa, getting away to get to that ball on the board. Good ball movement that time. They got the three-pointer from outside, and the ball bounces long. Almost looks like the ball has a lot of air in it tonight. If you notice how far the ball's bouncing out and the easy turnovers on dribbling and things. Loy Vaught comes back in. He'll replace Mark Hughes for Michigan. And Matt Bullard is back in to replace Jepson for Iowa. Very important that Michigan doesn't fall behind by very much here because Iowa will then start to take the air out of it a little bit. They've been in a very fast pace here because they need to go to the basket. Horton has it knocked out of his hands, but he retrieves it, then lobs it outside to Armstrong. Again, the ball bouncing right for Iowa. Michigan just can't come up with the ball even when they get the deflection. Armstrong off to Horton. Nice pass. Leads for the first time, 82 to 80, with a minute 42 left. Now Iowa won't be pressing out front as much. They're going to pack it in there a little bit, make Michigan beat them from the outside. Robinson has been fouled and will go to the free throw line. Hard to believe uh, that Marble uh, has not committed any more fouls than he has this game. That's his first. His first. Or at least that he's been called for, I guess. <laughs> Had to throw that in there. If all of the fouls that have occurred here this evening were called, we wouldn't have anybody remaining to play this game. Uh, time has been called by Iowa with a minute 26 remaining. Iowa has come all the way back. The Hawkeyes were down by 20 in the first half. They've kept chipping away, chipping away, and chipping away here in the second half, and now lead by two. It's been a, a switch of sides with the turnovers, a lot of them for Iowa in the first half. 14, while Michigan committed only three turnovers in the first half. In this second half, particularly during the surge, 
the Wolverines have turned the ball over far too many times. Well, the lack of field goals, that's the thing that really kills you. You can put you on the line, but sooner or later you're going to miss some of those foul shots, and Michigan's done a pretty good job of hitting them. Uh, they've only got them for one miss in the second half, or two misses in the second half. They're shooting better than 80% probably. But again, uh, the lack of production at the basket, you got to give Iowa a lot of credit. They've not allowed the Wolverines to get inside for any baskets. 126 remain to be played. Iowa is in front, 82 to 80. Both teams have called quite a few timeouts, but uh, we don't have the official number of what number of timeouts each team has, but that could be a critical factor here in the lat latter part of the uh, game with 126 to go. This is going to be interesting. It'll be a one and one for Ramil Robinson. He has hit six out of eight this evening. outside and knocked to the far side by Marble and a foul is called on Marble. That's his second. We have Griffin going to the ball here. A lot of credit to Mills for keeping this one alive. Didn't go over the shoulder there and Mike in the way there. Boom. I don't think that, that, that was a bad call but it's a tough 15,500 fans didn't like it. You got three guys colliding from three different directions. Somebody's going to be unhappy. Marble is the man that's unhappy. He has picked up his second, and Robinson, after missing the free throw. Coins being thrown on, the, thrown on the floor again. Can't believe how tough that can be. Uh, somebody could be seriously injured on uh, either team. Really shows poor sportsmanship. Mike Griffin at the free throw line has been perfect tonight. Four for four. Iowa in front by two. Some pressure packed free throws for Griffin. He has a chance to tie it if he hits the second half of this one on one situation. Again, they've got to stop Iowa down at the other end. Bart with a big rebound. He and Marble tumble to the court. It'll be Iowa's ball. Fought again, couldn't get rid of the ball, and I don't know what's the matter with Marble. I'll tell you, I do not like the Iowa players. Marble's been uh, trying to get in it with people. Horton's been elbowing people. It will be their ball because it's a jump ball, but uh, there's no call for that type thing. That's a good jump ball. He threw Vaught to the floor. I don't know why he's mad at Vaught. Troy Skinner will come into the ball game for Iowa. Horton will leave. Skinner's a excellent foul shooter. And with a one-point lead, you know that Iowa is going to be holding the ball. What Michigan needs to do now is not really commit the foul. They need to go ahead and be patient here, make them work for a tough shot, make sure they don't give them any rebounds. They've still got time, depending on what happens with this possession of Iowa. They don't really have to put them on the line yet. Kirk Taylor has checked into the ball game for Michigan. A minute 21 left. Iowa in front by one. Marble moves it off to Bullard. Willard goes past Mills, hands to Skinner. Want to make sure here you don't give him an easy basket. You can press him all you want to out here, but when the shot clock gets down there and it's down to 28 right now, you've got to guard the basket. Mike Griffin uh, staying underneath all by himself, not even coming out to guard Thompson. Shot clock down to 20. Now again's the time Michigan's got to guard the basket. Now can't it's down him, to 15. Can't let him have an easy one going in. Shot clock at 10. Armstrong to the baseline, bottled up by... Off the Bullard, back door to Armstrong, puts it up. No good, but a foul is called. There are three seconds on the shot clock. Griffin collects the foul with 37 seconds left of the ball game. Horton is back in, replacing Skinner. And he just completely wore themselves out, and uh, Ramil comes up, trying to cut down the passing lane. Griffin goes up to try and block it. I think again there, all he really had to try and do is make that shot as difficult as he possibly could, but uh, can't fault Griffin for trying to block the shot. Now the foul shots become very, very important if Armstrong hits them both here. Of course, you got the three-point play, which becomes very interesting <laughs> as well. It may be needed. 
deep. Big miss for Armstrong. Certainly is. Now the three-pointer becomes a situation. Frieder wants a timeout to talk about this, but the three-pointer becomes a winning situation That's on right. the road instead of a losing situation. That would be an excellent time for Michigan to get their first field goal in a long, long time. Time has been called by the University of Michigan with 37 seconds remaining in the game. Iowa in front by a score of 82 to 81. It has been a terrific comeback for the Iowa Hawkeyes. If Michigan cannot come back now in the last 37 seconds and pull this one out, it's going to be a disheartening loss and uh, certainly a big one on a very difficult road trip with Minnesota looming on Saturday afternoon. I think they realistically needed a win here uh, to give, get them going here. Uh, one more loss, as you say, is disastrous from the standpoint of uh, where they're going to wind up or if they're going to have a chance to win the Big Ten championship. If you lose it, though, I think you've got to get your kids up off the ground because uh, the important thing is trying to improve yourself as much as you possibly can before the tournament takes place. The Big Ten tonight, Indiana has defeated Indiana has beaten Northwestern 73-56, and I think the announcement was that Illinois was leading Ohio State 62-60. That was a final, I believe. That was Larry. a final also. Yeah. So interesting. a cliffhanger for the Illini tonight. It's going to be interesting here what Bill Frieder decides to do if they uh, get a basket here. Uh, Iowa will be in a press, I'm sure, as they have all night to try and steal the ball, but uh, they're going to have to decide whether they want to win it or just go for two for tie. <laughs> Armstrong makes it a two-point spread with 36 seconds remaining. 83-81. Said they'd be in the press, but they aren't. They're just going to guard the basket here. And Michigan looks like they're going to be content to try and wait. Get a good shot to win it. Higgins guarded closely by Horton. Underneath it goes. Rice with a fall away. No good. Rice got it back off balance. No good. Knocked into the air. And dug out of there by Horton. He is followed by Griffin. 14 seconds left, and Horton will go to the free throw line. Again, they got that basket. I'm not sure they knew how much time was left. Rice got that rebound. He was got knocked a little bit there and should have tried to maybe get it out to one of his teammates instead of throwing up an off-balance shot, but uh, I'm not sure Glenn knew how much time was left in the game. Great rebound by Rice. And Horton, who is one for six at the free throw line. Not a, shoot one and one. And not a great foul shooter, but uh, this would certainly be a big one if he can hit either one of them. He misses. 13 seconds left. Whoa, bad luck. Taylor chases it down. He retrieves it with eight seconds left. Down to Griffin. Bounces long. Cleared by Mills. He scores. Ties the game. One second. We go to overtime. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a great rebound by Mills. Looked like a little bit of a volleyball game going out there. Bill Frieder really happy to have this thing going into overtime. I'm not sure if they got a timeout with any time left on the clock, but it uh, looks like we're going to have a five-minute overtime. Bill Frieder ran all the way to the other end of the court following that shot by Mills that tied the game at 83-83 to force the overtime. Well, we've had just about everything here this evening. Some Great individual performances, some great clutch performances, and some big misses at the free throw line. Well, I'll tell you, there have been on both teams, but Horton's not a great foul shooter, but we've had uh, Robinson is a good foul shooter, Armstrong going up there under a lot of pressure and not uh, completing 100% of those. Michigan's first basket since the 6.50 mark in this second half. Unbelievable that they're able to hang on and tie this up without scoring in many field goals the last 11 minutes of the game. That's their fourth field goal. Well, we're headed to overtime with Iowa and Michigan still battling for a decision here, and uh, this game has offered anything and everything you could possibly hope for in college basketball. I looked at my watch with five minutes to go, and it's taken 20 minutes to play, play the last five minutes. five minutes of this basketball game. And we ain't done yet. A lot of people with fouls in here. Uh, you got a lot of people on both teams with three and four fouls, so as the fouls continue to mount here, uh, we start to see some players leaving the floor. Michigan just been really having a hard time stopping the Iowa Hawkeyes on the defensive end. And uh, again, when Iowa takes the lead, they knew they were going to try and milk that clock. 
Thompson, Jepson, and Bullard all with four personals for Iowa, while Mills and Robinson have four for Michigan. Wolverines will have Taylor, Mills, Vaught, Higgins, and Rice on the court with Bullard, Armstrong, Marble, Horton on for Iowa. Well, if you're an impartial observer this game, you had to be uh, very, very happy just to be here watching the ball, watching the ball game. It'll be Iowa's ball at the side. Michigan, 11 out of 29 field goals the second half. Iowa, 22 out of 38. They were hot. They scored 56 points in the second half, the Hawkeyes. And Michigan needed a basket with one second left to gain the overtime effort. Here is Marble, off balance score. He had two points at halftime. He has 24 for the night. Iowa back in front, 85-83. Taylor goes past Marble, moving in. 15-footer is short, knocked into the air. Mills with the rebound, puts it up. Bullard clears. And he's fouled by Mills. That, according to Arbrook, is his fifth. Michigan's done an excellent job during the game. Luckily, Bullard didn't see it. They had three guys down the floor all alone as Michigan tried to strip the ball. Mills fouling out. Probably at least 10 times during this game, I think Michigan could have used better judgment when they got the rebounds in there. They should have shorted back up, got everybody going. A lot of those shots they've been taking on, those second shots are only good when you make them, and they've had a difficult time making baskets here in the last part of the second half. Terry leaves with a total of 12 points, five field goals, and two free throws. This guy's yeah. almost automatic, I'll tell you. 92% foul shooter. But he's only one for two tonight. He's two for three as Iowa holds a three-point lead. Big thing in Michigan's got to be patient at the offensive end, regardless of what happens here. Come down and make sure they get a good basket and then just play good defense. Iowa with a four-point lead, 419 left in the overtime. Taylor around the Vaught. Scores! It's been a long time since we've seen anything from Vaught. He has 10 points for the night. Iowa in front by two. Marble brings it out in front down the lane, puts it up in there. What a second half Marble has had. Iowa by four. Brought up by Taylor. Higgins, three, bouncing high and cleared by Marble. Let the air out now. Four-point lead. They'll take their time. Unless they can get somebody open underneath real quickly. Got to guard the basket against Marble. You cannot let him make that penetration. He's just dynamite when he goes to the basket. Just shore it up, Michigan. Don't be in a hurry. You got three minutes to go here. Don't give him an easy shot when it gets inside. Shot clock down to 15. 310 left in the overtime. Armstrong takes it to the baseline. Bounce pass. Thompson alone on the weak side. 91-85. A couple of subs coming in for the Hawkeyes. Three of them, actually. Garner, Jepson, Moses. You quite understand how that ball gets when it goes through the basket there, how it gets off on the side of the floor. Somebody's got to be kicking that thing out of there in order to give Iowa a chance to go ahead and set their press up. A time is called by Michigan. We have three minutes left in the overtime. Iowa leads it by 91-85 count. Michigan's got it soft enough. Again, you're taking the guy that shoots the worst on his team for the foul line at 56%. Horton and putting the pressure on him to go one and one to the basket. But there's 25 seconds running off the clock before he committed that foul. Vaughn is out of the ball game. Hughes back in for Michigan. Marble checks in. Garner goes out. Thompson comes to the floor and Moses leaves. Big lineup comes in for defensive end uh, for Iowa, they had the little guys in, the better shooters in, supposedly, uh, during the offensive stint. Horton, two for six at the line, shooting one and one.
13 left to be played in the overtime. Taylor brings it up the floor. Higgins tries for three. Got him! Two big three-pointers for Sean Higgins. And the Wolverines are back to within one with a minute 58 left. Defense is the key here again. Boy, nice to have somebody with Higgins shooting ability come off the bench. He's had a hard time getting the basket, getting it in the basket tonight, but didn't matter with those two. Back door intercepted by Taylor. Now the Wolverines can take the lead. Higgins tries for two. Short. Hughes with a rebound. Boys Gives to Higgins. Back to Griffin, and he is fouled by Horton. Number four on Ed Horton. So the Wolverines will go to the free throw line. Michigan numerous times getting the rebound. Griffin there trying to get it on the outside. Not quite sure why they put it into Griffin in the low post because uh, they had plenty of time. But again, you got uh, Taylor coming in and doing a real decent job. Mike Griffin shooting one on one for the University of Michigan. Misses the shot. Horton with the rebound and a foul is called on Hughes. Boy, I tell you, both teams, both teams had opportunities to go up there and get it. Reaches in there, and again, Horton going to have a chance to go to the other end and put some points on the uh, board with the uh, clock stopped. And we've talked about him how many times he's uh, gone up there. A lot of pressure. He's three for eight tonight. He was out of the ball game and bought back in to replace him. Iowa in front by one with a minute 25 left in the overtime. One and one for Ed Horton. Misses again, and Rice with a rebound. A minute 22 left in the game. Taylor brings it up the floor. Bought to Rice. Griffin has it knocked away, and it's picked up by Thompson, and he is fouled by Higgins. It will be written as a game of missed opportunities here in Iowa City. Again, they put the ball into Griffin where he gets double teamed there. Horton stripping it away from him. And uh, like to have Mike on the outside, maybe entering that ball to the other shooters. But Michigan a little careless again. Hughes is going to come back in the game. Kirk Taylor been doing a good job. Ramil Robinson really been in the game. He's on the bench, but he's been up yelling instructions and uh, really doing the job. Thompson at the line, shooting one and one, and he misses. But Horton had it and stolen away by Rice. Now it comes Taylor to Rice, jumper off the glass. Vaught had it momentarily, chased down by it's Hughes in the corner. Again. Out it comes to Taylor. 56 seconds left in the game. Higgins from three, got him! Holy moroli. What a time for him to come to life. 94-92, Michigan. Armstrong trying to move in is fouled by Taylor. Again, Iowa so capable of moving the ball up the floor in a hurried situation. You watch Armstrong here, he gives Taylor to fake and he takes it, goes in there, and the only mistake he made was trying to block that ball. If he'd have just uh, put his hands up, how did Horton get that rebound on the last one? Holy man. How did Rice rip it away? Whew. Armstrong will be at the free throw line to shoot two. Michigan in front, 94-92 with 44 seconds left of the overtime. Well, you almost thought this game had to be over, but uh, Higgins comes in, nails three big three-pointers to pull Michigan uh, back in the lead after it looked like they were all but uh, in trouble. That was the fifth personal on Kirk Taylor, who leaves with two points for the Wolverines. Did Ramil Robinson fall out? I have him with four. So do I, but he didn't bring him back in. He's bringing Griffin in, so I don't know what... Uh, B.J. Armstrong, Armstrong at the free throw line. No shot clock for Michigan. I'm sure I'll be pressured and they can take afford to take the last shot. If Armstrong even hits them both here, they can try to win it in overtime. He's hit four or five out of nine. He's 
94-93 with 44 seconds left in the overtime. Not a place to be if you have a weak heart. Huh, it has been something, hasn't it? I think everybody got their money's worth here tonight as well as the viewing audience. And it isn't over yet. <laughs> Armstrong ties the game. 94 each, 44 seconds left in the overtime. And again, they're on their feet at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Ooh, a bad pass, but it's knocked out of bounds. The Wolverines got a break there. They'll retain possession. Griffin, right down there in front of him, he could have passed the ball to him. How many times have we seen him try to get the ball Way to on the wing? Holy mackerel. Be a little better here with the ball on the side, but... Heels into Griffin. 42 seconds left. Oh, terrible pass for Higgins. Well, there you get it. Yeah, it was ball. First year in the Big Ten. Why he threw that ball on there, who knows? But I think he doesn't want to have it and have to dribble it. He's still com really, really confused as to why Ramil Robinson is uh, is not in the game if he has not fouled out. Wade Looking Bill comes back in. Here's another look at this pass. He had no advantage whatsoever. Even if he'd gotten the ball there, he wasn't going to do anything with it. Michigan obviously had to be going for the last, or should have been going for the last shot. There again, uh, probably the lack of timeouts really costing Michigan. Iowa will very patiently wait for this last shot. Iowa's going to just uh, hold the ball. Then you got to look out for the penetration. See if Dr. Tom Davis calls a timeout here when he gets about 15 seconds to set up the last play, if he has one. Game tied at 94. Double screen again. Here comes B.J. Armstrong off the right wing. Armstrong from outside, bounces long, Michigan with a rebound, Higgins down to Rice, Five Rice seconds. working one-on-one, -on -one. Rice moving in, backs it away, two seconds left, over to the right side, we go to the second overtime, that basket quite, does not count. I don't quite understand what happened there, he had five seconds when he crossed midcourt, the best shooter probably in the gym, and he just did not go to the basket. It is tied at 94-94 as we head for our second overtime, and you're exactly right. Rice had a chance, but didn't take the shot, and Vaught's shot was too late. Stay with us. We'll be back with more from Iowa City in just a moment. You're watching Pass Sports. The thumb of the right hand heavily taped. Apparently, he banged it up during the course of the... Uh, early stages of the first overtime. Here's Marble. Got it. Just two. Whew. He was close to three points there. 96-94, Iowa in front in the second overtime. Robinson to Higgins. Higgins moving in. Back to Robinson. He scores! Higgins may have traveled just prior to the pass, but he got away with it, and it's tied at 96. 4.34 left in the second overtime. We promised you a dandy here tonight. We didn't really expect double overtime. Here goes Armstrong. Tipped by Horton. Follows again and in. Well, I tell you, he puts on a clinic in there on rebounds. Just unbelievable how many rebounds he gets. Iowa in front, 98-96. Higgins looking inside. There's Hughes, but a foul was called away from the ball. No, you're not quite sure what happened here, but I think Michigan's going to go to the foul line. Somebody fouled Vaught inside. Number 51, Les Jepson, and that's number five on Les, according to our book. And he'll leave the game with his fifth personal, a total of four points. Again, every possession when Iowa takes the lead for Michigan is crucial because then Iowa's going to go ahead and milk the clock at the other end. And I tell you, I thought this game was over a little earlier, Larry, until uh, they had uh, Higgins coming in there bombing three straight three-pointers. What a lift he gave Michigan. We're waiting for Matt Bullard to check in. He'll replace Les Jepson in the Iowa lineup. And Loy Vaught will go to the free throw line for the first time this evening. He's shooting 78% for the year. He has 10 points on five field goals. There's Bullard. 4.03 left in the second overtime. Iowa in front. But Vaught could tie it if he converts one and one. What a pretty stroke he has. You watch him shoot that ball. Fundamentally, I don't think you could give anybody a training film uh, that are young players out there and have them uh, instructed any better than watching Vaught shoot these foul shots. 
Bach with a bonus now can tie it at 98 each. Four minutes, three seconds left in the second overtime as Iowa brings it down the floor. Thompson to Buller to Armstrong. I think these two teams will sleep well tonight. Nobody's <laughs> left themselves uh, without really going after every, every ball out there. Bullard from the corner moves in, and it's short. Rebound put back up by Thompson. 100 to 98. Iowa in front. Three and a half minutes left. Iowa again uh, choosing with the lead. His staff stay back and try and guard the middle if they can. Glenn Rice has been quiet for a long, long time. He's been out there, seems like, forever. Backdoor! Feed layup for Higgins. What a great pass by Romeo Robinson. Again, you can see the fatigue factor coming into play here. Both teams uh, really, really uh, struggling as Marble hits another one from outside. 102 to 100. 302 left in the second overtime. Robinson brings it back. Feeds Rice. Tries for three. Long rebound. Rice had it momentarily. Marble got away with a travel down to Armstrong. Boy, oh boy. Now again, they've just got to be patient. 2.40 to go in the game here. Shot clock at 35. All they got to do is make sure they don't give it to him inside. <laughs> got to just make sure they don't get a basket this time, Larry. Two and a half minutes left of the second overtime. Horton and Hughes pushing and shoving. Armstrong goes past Vaught, tries for three. It's short. Rebound by Bullard. Puts it back up. Scores. A basket will count of the foul. Continually getting rebounds on the offensive end, but I think it has a lot to do with how tired everybody out there is, and rightly so. Big, big rebound and three-point uh, attempt here for Fuller. He didn't even go strong to the basket. He was flat-footed six feet from the basket. Robinson leaves with five personals, total of 18 points tonight. Well, Griffin comes back in for Michigan. Looking, Bill, will check in uh, following the shots. Shot for Bullard. Matt, three for four tonight at the free throw line. 104 to 100 the score. Iowa in front with 209 left in the second overtime. Now looking, Bill, comes in to replace Bullard. 105 to 100 Iowa. Caleb Demetrius Caleb will come in for Michigan. He wears number 13. Hughes out. He replaced Hughes. He'll, he'll speed in the game, and Caleb also is a little better three-point shooter. Michigan going to need one of these in order to get uh, themselves back in the game here. Two ten left in the second overtime. Caleb, the corner for Vaught, back out to Griffin, over the top to Rice, and he is fouled. Rice will go to the line to shoot 101 as Moses picks up his second personal. Good lob pass by Griffin on the inside here to Rice. And almost looked like he was going to go ahead and dunk that the first time. Moses, a real cheap foul there. But uh, again, uh, Glenn, I think if he was a little fresher in his game and hadn't played most of the game, would have taken that in the air and slam dunked it. Rice will be shooting 101 for Michigan. Two oh four left in the game. Iowa in front by five. One hundred five to one hundred. Rice has hit five out of six from the free throw line tonight. Ray Thompson. Thompson checks back in to replace Moses. Twenty three points for Glenn Rice. Done an excellent job, has Iowa on Rice the second half. He's only had two baskets, and for the Big Ten's leading scorer, uh, he's had to work awful hard. They've switched players on him. They've had Marble guarding him. They've had Moses guarding him. They've had uh, Thompson guarding him, and he's really had a difficult time getting loose for the Wolverines. 105-101, Iowa. 204 left in the second overtime. Well, Rice hits a couple of clutch free throws, narrows the gap to three. Skinner comes back in along with Bullard. 
for Iowa. Important and looking, Bill, check out. Important thing here again is they do not give many easy baskets. Bill Frieder's towel coming out on the floor there, and he quickly retrieved that. Two minutes left in the second overtime. Big thing is here just to stop them and then get the ball and have a chance to narrow the gap. Skinner in trouble, and a foul is called. It'll be on Hughes. Second personal on Mark, and Troy Skinner, who is an 86% free throw shooter from Palmer, Iowa, will parade to the free throw line. Horton will come back in, and Vaught comes back for Michigan. Again, plenty of time in this game. All they've got to do, let them run the clock if they want to. You just got to make sure they get inside and rebound. I think that's part of the problem Michigan's had. They've been so gambling on uh, defense, they've come outside and uh, given them a lot of second opportunities on the inside. Skinner hadn't gotten much playing time, but these would be big ones. Ooh. Harton had it for a moment, but Griffin is called for traveling. It'll be Iowa's ball with a minute 48 left. Ball will just not bounce Michigan's way. Moses back in to replace Horton for the Hawkeyes. They want the ball offensively, and they want Horton uh, off the floor, uh, probably being the worst foul shooter for Iowa. Bullard gets it into Skinner. Looked like Higgins had stuck his hand up. He may have had an interception there. Clear out, boy, I tell you, Armstrong's got the whole basket to himself if he wants to go in there, but he's going to be patient and let that clock run down. Mm, they had Armstrong back door, but Marble chose to keep it. A minute 26 left in the second overtime. Iowa in front by three points. 18 on the shot clock. And an offensive foul is called on Marble. Woo! That's number three on Roy, and the Wolverines get the ball back. That toughy here, he stops, and Griffin uh, in there. And, oh, he hooked him, that's what happened. It wasn't the body bump that Griffin gave him, it was Marble stuck his left arm around behind him and hooked him. Michigan gonna get the ball out underneath, and desperate need of a basket here as Hughes comes back in the game. Bullard again, could have be a tough time getting that ball in bounds. 117 left in the second overtime. Lead pass for Rice. Caleb brings it across the line. Caleb guarded closely by Armstrong, needs help, gets it to Higgins. Off the butt, two. Both teams doing an excellent job of coming back in this game. Just about the time Michigan looks like they're out of the ball game, uh, they're able to come back with a basket. Now a one-point lead, and again, very, very important that they protect that basket as we get a timeout. Time is called by Iowa with 49 seconds left in the second overtime. Hawkeyes are in front by one. It's 105-104. You're watching Passports. Passports. 